everyone, I'm Nick Raboy, and in this tutorial, we're going to see how to add pagination to an 11 static generated website. So in particular, if you look at my screen, you'll notice that I have one of my other websites open. This is pokertrainernick.com. I have a videos page, and on this page, I have a list of videos. Now, this is similar to what we saw in a previous tutorial on the Polyglot Developer, where we loaded videos from YouTube. But in this particular tutorial, we're going to scroll down and we're going to see how to add pagination to something like this. So that way we can navigate between pages, showing less content on the page, which will allow for a better user experience and a faster load time of each one of your web pages, which is good for SEO, among other things. So stay tuned and see what's in store for us. All right, so for this particular example, well, you could create a fancy website with a lot of styling like I did here um, for each one of these pages and the next and previous button. What we're gonna be doing is something more along the lines of this. Now you'll notice that this is a web page that's already ready to go. It's kind of based off of what we saw in a previous tutorial, uh, but we have a list of videos. It has the thumbnail, it has the title, and it has a link. Uh, there is no CSS styling or there's very little uh, we're not going to add much here in that aspect, but what we are going to do to this page, so this foundation, is we're going to add pagination, so that way we only show maybe two or three videos on a page, so that way you can get an idea of what's going to happen. So if I go into Visual Studio Code, which is my editor of choice for this example, you'll notice that I have a few files. So for example, I have a videos nunjucks file, um, so I don't really have any front matter for this particular page. I do have a loop. So this is looping through videos coming from a data file. So if I look at my data file, uh, it's in the underscore data directory. And I have a videos.json file, which is an array of objects containing strictly the title, URL, and thumbnail for each video. And I just have a few of them. So if I go back to the videos nunjuck file, you'll notice that I am looping through it. The videos relates to the videos.json file, and I am showing each particular item on the screen. Now, the great thing with 11T is you don't have to worry about adding too much other code or really changing your existing code to get pagination working. And there's different ways that you can do it, uh, but I'm going to try to show you one of the easier ways and kind of what I have on my own personal website, pokertrainernick.com. So what we're going to do is first we're going to jump into the JSON front matter. And yours might not be JSON. I prefer JSON over the other options, so it's totally up to you. What I'm going to do is I am going to add to this object and your object may already contain other data as well. What we want to do is we want to add a pagination field and this pagination field is an object. What we want to do is we want to specify where the data is flowing from. Um, so in this case, we say data and it's coming from the videos data source. So videos.json. The next thing we want to do is we want to associate a size for each particular page uh, for our site. So I'm going to say size. And what I'm going to say is maybe we're going to have a size of two. And we're going to play around with that value as we progress. But for now, it's going to be two. Next up, and this is kind of optional, is um, you can assign an alias to this particular pagination data set. So if you don't want to um, call it videos or you want to use something else, you totally can. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say alias. And I'm just going to call it videos for this example. But I, the whole purpose here is that I want to show that you can add an alias to your pagination data. So we have pagination set up. So let's go ahead and refresh our page. So I'm going to build it and I'm going to run it. So I do have a script involved. All it's doing is deleting my underscore site directory. I'm running 11t and uh, then I'm going to serve it using a node package. So this is going to build it. You'll notice that it built a few pages here instead of just the one. Uh, and I'm going to say serve, and I'm going to say site. Now, if I go back into my web browser and I refresh the page, you'll notice that I only have two videos, the first page of videos. So even though that I am using the same video source, the pagination that we added to the front matter is now taking effect. So we need a way to be able to switch between the pages rather than doing it manually by entering something in the URL bar. So let's go back into our code. So the good thing is our existing code up here, lines 11 through 18, it doesn't need to change. So we can actually add a second step to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some basic HTML. 
So now I'm going to work with the pagination information. So if I don't want to include a next and a previous button, I don't have to. Just like if I don't want to include individual page numbers, I don't have to do that either. It's totally up to you. You might be happy with just the next and previous. You, maybe you don't care about having numbers. Or maybe you just want numbers, but you don't want a next and previous. Maybe you want a last and a first page. Who knows? Whatever, whatever makes the most sense for you is something that I'm okay with as well. So let's go ahead and add kind of multiple options here. So let's go ahead and add a list item. And for this list item, we're going to see if it has a previous page. And if it does, let's go ahead and show a previous link. Otherwise, we're going to leave it blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an if statement. So we're saying if href.previous from the pagination data. Uh, so if it exists, then let's go ahead and add that link. And then we're going to end if. So we're going to end this if statement. And you could easily do an else statement if you want to. Maybe you want to style the previous button differently if it exists versus showing it at all is totally up to you. So we're going to say end if. And then we're going to close out the list item tag. Now, like I said, this line 22 doesn't need to be included in your page at all. And based on our code, uh, if I were to rerun it, so I'll first build it. And then I'll serve it. And I'll go into my web browser and refresh the page. I just have an empty list item because I didn't put the if statement around the tag itself. I only put the if statement uh, within the text. It's totally up to you if you want to exclude that list item totally. Uh, but that's kind of out of the scope of this particular tutorial. So let's go back in our code. Let's do the same thing for the next button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this line. And instead of previous, I'm going to say next. Now, if there is a next page available, so if it exists, it's going to show a next link. But like with the previous link, it will still show the bullet item regardless on if that next or previous exists. So let's go ahead and add our numeric page numbers before we preview it again. So before the next and after the previous, let's go ahead and add a loop. So we're going to say for page entry in pagination.pages. And we're going to close this loop. And within the loop, this is where we can actually show each of our page numbers based on the loop index. So let's go ahead and add list items. So we're going to add a link. We're going to say pagination.hrefs. We're going to say loop. We're going to say index zero. So this is going to be our URL for the actual page index. And then what we're going to show on the screen is we're going to show the actual loop index. And we're going to close the URL and close the list item. So let's go ahead and save it. I'm going to actually rerun the build engine and then I'm going to serve it. I'm going to go to my web browser and I'm going to refresh the page. You'll notice now that I have numerous pages and I have an X button, but I have no previous button. So let me go ahead and click on next. I click next. I have two new videos showing up. The URL bar has changed to the next page. I also have a previous button. Let's go to hit next again. The next button has now disappeared, uh, but I still have two new videos and I have other links in my pagination navigation system. So if I go back into my code and we'll, we'll know, remember that we're not actually going to style anything. The whole goal here was to show you how easy it was to add pagination to any existing 11 page. So if I go back into my code, I only touched two areas and I didn't actually touch any of my existing content within 11 This is entirely new code markup, etc. So that way, if I wanted to add pagination down the line, I don't have to rewrite my entire theme to my website. So up at the top inside of the front matter, I added a pagination field, which is an object. I added a data source, which in this case was from the data directory videos.json. I added an alias and I added a page size. Now, prior to adding that front matter, I was doing a loop for videos and it was looping directly from that data directory. But because I'm now aliasing as videos, it's now taking it from the pagination source, uh, which is what we want. Uh, all we actually did was we added this div down here with some previous and next as well as indexes. And 
that's all we did. It was very simple. And we can do this for every one of our pages that has some kind of list of items. So maybe you have a blog, maybe you have a list of videos like I do. Uh, who knows? So to go back, I mean, this is what I did for my own site. Basically the same code. Of course, I styled it, but I added this pagination to the bottom of my video section. So this video section, we did see how to do this in a previous tutorial on the blog. So if you wanted to take a look, I encourage you to, but it wasn't that bad. If you like this video, please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All your likes and subscriptions, they really do mean a lot to me and they go a long way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of your day.